Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, kick your feet up, subscribe to this family friendly channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name so you don't miss the sneak peeks of what's coming up next. In this video, it's the final season of Atlanta, episode three entitled Born to Die. I give a full episode recap with photos offset to the side and then I give my review at the end. No need to dig around and keep all of the minute marks in the comments. It's all coming up next. An onlooker approaches Al after a bar mitzvah show. What a great performance. How do you do that? You know, your facial expressions, the way you hold your body, everything. You know, my son makes videos, but he needs more. He makes music, but uh, maybe you can teach him how to rap. I mean, maybe he can shadow you for like a week. Al is beyond over what the guy is saying. Teach him how to do what? Rap? Man, I don't have time. You can get with my manager on that type of stuff. Before Al can completely walk away from the insult, the man shouts, I'll pay you a million dollars. It's an emergency meeting as staff views the striking video of Lauren Loudy. She holds up a black teen at gunpoint doing his fundraiser rounds. He announces to the staff, she's one of ours. And this is her book that's climbing exponentially on the New York Times bestsellers list. Someone else at the table is shocked. She just finished reading the book. It helped her make a paradigm shift in her life, understanding things that may not be as they seem. The lead continues with the meeting to deliver more bad news. This black teen is suing her and now there's a dip in sales. Earn can't believe his ears. They are more concerned with the book sales and not the crime. There are few companies interested in securing the rights, so they need this incident to go away and fast. New image, new branding. Come on, shout out some ideas. The ideas from the team begin. Maybe we can display the team and him having a checkered past or put out crime data of that area to show maybe she had the right to defend herself. What if we get her to donate to the kids football team? I mean, it's tax deductible. Ern leans his head on the wall in pure exhaustion of what he's hearing and mumbles under his breath, can we just work on other assignees? Can we sign new people? The comment is pressed with an answer, no. Lauren is top priority right now and everyone has their assigned assignees. Unless you can get a prestigious act, the D'Angelo's, the Banksy's. Ern jokes that he could probably get D'Angelo, which brings laughter to the room. The lean tells Ern, have at it and request for the assistant to announce what's next on the agenda. Ern texts someone, hey, do you still know the name of D'Angelo's hair braider? Al enters the studio with someone in the booth recording some awkward auto-tune yodeling. They seem confused as to who Paperboy is and ignore his presence for a while. One boy in the hat seems to control the session, telling the engineer, hey, play Ricky Rock. The success, it depends on the internet's decision. Al breaks the conversation, saying he's there to speak with someone named Benny. It's the one in the hat. Oh, Paperboy, you're the one my dad bought. The guy in the cowboy hat said he used to listen to Paperboy when he was a kid. And Benny is ready to get in the booth. He doesn't need Paperboy's help. Al can just sit in the back and collect his check. His dad just always wants to help, you know, give back. When Al sits down, he notices a pregnant girl listening to it all. Ricky Rock and Yodel Kid are excited to put down some tracks. Al and Bunk quickly notice one another and give each other their respects. Rick is in the booth completely offbeat and raps, I'm Rickin' and I'm rockin'. Bunk is there with Rick and he laughs, do you want to listen to this or converse in Studio 3? Al knows what Bunk is thinking. This isn't hip hop. This ish ain't it. It isn't what it used to be. But hey, I mean, I'm collecting my one mil and I'm dipping out. I stay on that Robin Hood app, you know? Bunk says a million, huh? You should be making 10 mil. Stocks, bonds, all that's cool. If you want to live out somewhere in the country with a comfortable lifestyle, maybe even have a wife. You and I know this lifestyle ain't cheap. Saving money ain't making money. You're letting the real money walk by. Actually, me and some of my people talk about this stuff all the time. We are meeting tomorrow night and you should come through. Ern arrives at the shared location address from his last text. Rallies in Georgia? Ern sees a door entry labeled D'Angelo. It's an odd entry, but the inside is cold and empty. He asks for D'Angelo, but there's no response. Just mean stares and an open area. Just to wait. 
Al enters the meeting and is even invited to enjoy some cookies. When the speaker arrives, he's very strict that everyone understands. If you're in this room, you care about your future. It's not about rap. If you're here dealing in rap, then you can leave right now. Everyone in here can rap their asses off. If rapping was just about making people money, then Cassidy would be a millionaire. Can you tell me from this picture who's making money, who's topping the Billboard charts, and who has billions of streams globally? We know it's all about the optics. It's everything. With my system, I'm tossing your black ass a rifle laughed. Bunk ads. I can help my brother when I'm better and at the top. Yes, memorize this. YWA plus Grammys equals money. Go to sleep and dream about it. Al wants to know, what's YWA? He learns it stands for Young White Avatar. Bunk lets him know it's one of those white kids you hung out with yesterday in the studio. Get him, nature him, and train them all. Al is perplexed, saying, like Pokemon? I can go in the booth right now, make another album, tour off of that, and get a Grammy. Bunk doesn't doubt his strategy, and he's sure that the album would do great. But no one wants to hear him, because he's old. He can never be as good as his last album. The next slide is Chief Keef. They have a photo labeled Young Street. There's the OGs, the young kids that look up to us. They respect our influence. Then there's family films. You on the cusp of an OG. But then the next step is you playing the best friend of Ice Cube in the next Are We There Yet 5 in less than a year. Al laughs that that's not him. And he just got back from an arena tour and he's still hot in the street. Bunk reminds him, it's not a soccer stadium and things go up and down. And to be real, when you walked into the studio, did those kids even know who you were? Al is still in denial. The streets know him. And the speaker wants to know, does he want to be like Blue Bud? He was a fan of his and didn't even know he had an album out until he was dead for over five months. Bunk wants the attendees to know, if they want a nice life out in the woods and silence, that's fine. But if they want the lifestyle, they need a YWA as soon as possible. While everyone still remembers you. Al goes to the school where he hears rap words, I'm old school like 2005. If you remember that, then you're probably about to die. The teachers keep telling me I ain't gonna be ish, but I just made a meal on live streaming on Twitch. The student body is infatuated and he even throws money into the crowd with security guards. And what do you know? It's Benny. Al sees Yodel Kid and it's obvious he's under the influence. When Al finally catches up with Benny, he wants to manage him and develop him as an artist. Unfortunately, Benny says that's great, but Bunk is his manager now. He pulled up on him after the studio meeting. Al is shocked and it's a shot to the kidney of deception. Benny has to go now, as he has more high school performances for that day. Yodel Kid catches back up with Al hardly able to stand up, but Al offers him a ride, but he better not vomit in his car. Ern has waited a long time, and there is not even a clear indication of exactly how long. Time passes with boredom, wall drawing, and now Ern just asks for water. There's shelving of Dasani water, and now Ern is super pissed. Oh, no, 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 no. This, this is unacceptable. I've been here for a week. Where is D'Angelo? Can I please meet D'Angelo? There's some sort of calm that takes over Ern, and maybe it's even reverse psychology as he sits on the floor, catches his breath, and says calmly, I want to experience D'Angelo. This makes the doorkeeper stand up, slowly walk to a wall, and unlock a small entry of darkness. When Ern gets to the other side, it's a man listening to music, singing, and fixing a chicken skin and peanut butter sandwich. It appears to be D'Angelo, but when the man turns around, it's not. It's someone claiming that you asked for the D'Angelo experience, so speak. Ern is pissed. He hasn't bathed in four days. He thought this was some sort of D'Angelo needs new management, show me patience type of ish, but I need to sign D'Angelo, okay? Since you're not D'Angelo, I need you to tell me what D'Angelo is. And the man describes, it's a complex network across the country of men and women, earth and light. He has proven himself as a protector. And he christens Ern 
with peanut butter spread across his forehead. La 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 la. Iron can't believe this mess. He's just been through it. He can't go back without Sandy D'Angelo. There's a lie on the table and he will get in trouble. The man touches his temples as if tapping into a psyche of information and tells Ern, when you were eight, you had a dream you were swimming and below was a man's hands grabbing you, pulling you downward and you fought to get free. Why was he so certain that the hands were intended to harm him? Now Ern has to go. He's had enough. Before he leaves, the man wants to know, hey, were you really going to sign me? Ern says, yeah, but... I can't. I gotta go. You you sounded good though. Benny and Bunk are on the red carpet at the Grammys. Even Al arrives and handshakes the progression of Bunk and Gas 90. Bunk apologizes for Benny, but it was all business, nothing personal. And Al doesn't take offense as he's not Grammy nominated, but he has a new artist, Yodel Kid, and now he's triple platinum. Dang, paper boy, that was you? <laughs> yeah, now I gotta go find him. As Al walks around and continues to text Yodel Kid, he sees Benny. Hey man, the driver went to go pick him up. Have you seen or heard from Yodel Kid? And Benny has bad news. I mean, it's gone viral, haven't you heard? Yodel Kid OD'd. It's sad, man. Benny even says <laughs> he'll even probably get that Grammy. At the Grammys, Yodel Kid wins a Grammy and his baby mama accepts the award on his behalf. He always said he wanted to be a legend, and he did it. Darius shakes his head at the Grammys and says there's no place for a black man anymore. Al says that he's not cut out to be a manager. The entire experience made me sick. When he realizes his words, he asks Ern, are you okay, man? Ern says that this experience isn't about feeling good. It's about what survives. And he has to go for the evening as he has an early meeting in the morning. Al declines an after party with Darius. And Al is left emotionally wiped out. And Kodak Black's song, Let Me Know, plays in the background as the scene goes to black. And that is the end of the episode. And now it is time for your favorite part of the video. That's right, my review. Let me say before I get to anything else, y'all, that D'Angelo scene wiped me out with laughter. I was laughing so hard. I thought that was so well written. How did Donald Glover not bust out laughing? I wonder how many takes that it took for him not to bust out laughing. Because when he christened him across the forehead, like Simba with that peanut butter, I was just like, I would have had at least four or five bloopers before I got myself together because that was hilarious. And you could tell the character of Ern was just like bubbling with anger. He was just looking at him like, is he serious? <laughs> that just took me out. That la 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 la. I actually thought, y'all, I was so excited when I saw the braids. Okay, can we say that the person that he texted, they did give him D'Angelo's braid or you know they did give them the location you know they did what they were supposed to do but i really want to know who was the person that sent him there can can and can earn go over there and get his actors and stuff to mess up their life like he did in the previous season because that was funny um but he the, whoever sent him that text they did provide okay it just wasn't what he was looking for maybe earn should have been a little bit more specific but y'all i actually thought it was gonna be d'angelo that popped up in the scene because they had at the back you know of his hair his braids and he started to get up and he was singing i'm like okay is d'angelo making an acting debut and y'all know i had to look it up on imdb i'm like is it him did they not post it because they're trying to keep it a secret and a surprise for the episode i was just so excited i was like if he turns around and asks d'angelo i just can't wait to see the real d'angelo the real d'angelo's depiction of this whole episode because if you are a fan of d'angelo you know that d'angelo did a few interviews a while back about his experience in the industry for the longest time D'Angelo was very passionate about his craft about being a musician uh, his artistry his ideas and then he was upset because they pressured him to do an image that he really wasn't comfortable with they wanted him to be this over sexualized take off your shirt become this sex symbol and it will rev up your career it did because it brought even more 
more of a female base and we all remember the how does it feel video you know when it's just him and sprinkles of water and drizzling down and just this very intimate sexual video but in actuality D'Angelo didn't like that he felt like they were just trying to push him as a sex symbol and people started to listen to his music less in depth and he got depressed very very depressed he also dealt with addiction and a couple of years ago of course he came out with black messiah and he had a new album but if you listen to that album it was great but fans had a very hard time listening to the words a lot of the, the words sounding even more muffled than before and it was like you were enjoying the artistry but when you listen to the album in which I think it felt a little rushed so that and the live performance of that album which you can actually look at on YouTube it was a totally different D'Angelo so I thought that they were going to bring that out in this episode and maybe write in some of the opinions that he had which Donald Glover has the freedom to do right so moving on that that scene was absolutely hilarious <laughs> I, I just couldn't get over it. I was just laughing so, so hard. Okay, so let's start with a lot of the symbolisms and things that happened in this episode. Let's talk about how psychologically everyone has a price. Everyone. And in this episode, it really dawned on that. And I will share with you what I learned in one of my psychology courses years ago. Okay, we all talk about things that we wouldn't do. We all talk about things that we couldn't follow them on, whether it be your morals, whether it be just your opinion, or it's just a C minute biased. I'll give you an example. Let's say, for instance, you're a guy, okay, and we're at a party, and I say, hey man, if I give you $10. Will you kiss that dude? You be like, no. Nah, what you talking about? I don't want to kiss no dude. If ten dollars, what you? That's that's crazy. You insulted me. Okay, how about I give you a hundred dollars? No, nah, man, that's crazy. Okay, how about I give you a thousand dollars? Now you start to question your viewpoints. Okay, is this a kiss on the cheek? Is this a kiss on the face? Now you're getting specific. Now you are toying and thinking about how can you sway, bend, and limber how you feel about a prospect, right? That, oh, this might be a kiss, but we're talking about $10,000 or $20,000, right? Now if I say, hey, man, if I give you $10,000 and you kiss that guy on the cheek, would you do it? A lot of people then sway and change what they said they wouldn't do. They would actually do it. Okay. So in this situation, Ern, excuse me, Al is presenting an opportunity of what he just at the beginning of the episode teach him. What? What do you mean? Get out of my face. Talk to my manager about that. But then when the dad says, "Hey, I'll give you a million dollars," he reconsiders. In that moment. He had a price, not even really wondering or getting the details of what exactly would, would go on. He just went for it. He was so against it. But that one million dollar thing clicked in his head. So when it comes to the industry, you have to think about what are a lot of the things that artists said that they wouldn't do or say or who they would work with or the message that they would put out. But they did it because of their craving the career craving the popularity being famous right and and desperate to put out their artistry there are so many artists pink being one of them you know la reed says hey i think you would be better coming out as, as r&b she she did it we didn't know right we were thinking oh is she light skin you know what's going on like okay i really loved her song you know i thought it was great and then later, come to find out, years later, she felt that she was forced to do that. She was, she really saw herself as a rocker. She wanted to have a different image. That's just one example. So there's no telling how many artists had a price and had a negotiation of what they would do to change their artistry and even who they were. Now let's get into corruption, the Grammys, and how we see things, right? I could go on and on, you guys. I could do a whole podcast about the Grammys over the years. Let's just let's just let's just say from the beginning of the Grammys, it hasn't been the most welcoming to people of color. Over time, people see the profit in black. People see the influence of black. It has it has been that way since the beginning of time. When it comes to the Grammys over the years, it took them forever to get an R and B category. It took them forever forever to consider rap being something as serious a serious genre of 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 music people started to ask 
who are making these decisions about who wins a Grammy and the entries, okay, are submitted by record companies as well as the members of the Academy and are reviewed to determine the eligibility, uh, the eligibility and the category placement. So these voting members of, uh, I think it's NARAS, through a series of ballots, select five nominees for each award and then ultimately a winner. So the voters cast ballots only in their areas of expertise. So then we start to question, okay, who are the people who cast the ballots? How are they selected? And with more investigations, it started to come out that a lot of those individuals who are in these categories showed a lot of behaviors of racism. Are we surprised, right? You start to think about, wow, you know, I understand the Michael Jacksons, the Whitney Houstons, the Quincy Jones, you know, all of the the rock groups, you know, and here's the fact for you. Diana Ross has been nominated, I don't know how many times, for a Grammy, but she's never won. To be such an impactful person on dance hall and pop and to be a part of Motown that she, she doesn't have a Grammy. And you just start to think, why? Even Justin Bieber. Right. Justin Bieber posted on Instagram not too long ago that his album was not categorized as R&B. He specifically stated that the purpose of his album was to be in the realm of R&B. And the fact that he received some acknowledgement for the album. But it was in the wrong category. This has been going on for a very long time, especially with R&B. And with R&B, a lot of the songs that are R&B from white artists are thrown into the pop charts. It's this bottom line systemic thing that's been going on with the Grammys for I don't know how long. They don't want too much kudos or attention going to R&B. That is just a fact, right? The pop charts, or as they call the pop tart charts, you're hot, you're getting that money out, you're skyrocketing on those billboard charts. You are seeing an era of more talentless artists and artists having no problem with saying, hey, this isn't me. It's just selling. I have the image and it's going to work, okay? Not to throw any shade, not to put any, any artists down, but it's no shocker that cardi b has over 100 writers okay and 50 of those writers got her a grammy nod and a win right she's been real open and saying that she does have writers the same uh writer that megan the stallion has and helping her with a lot of songs okay there's a difference in getting help and saying hey i think this hook should go here and you should sing that or whatever but a lot of artists and we're learning can buy those rights as being a writer without actually writing anything it's just all these loops and turns of people trying to own music and gain their masters to where they can't be you know shucked and jive about ownership of music it's just this gumbo of confusion right uh, or the temptations will say ball of confusion speaking of temptations it was good to see <laughs> otis <laughs> that's not his real name <laughs> but the guy that played otis right the guy that played bunk in the episode i saw him i was like look at <laughs> All right, look at old boy from the Temptations. Look at Otis. No, but anywho, I thought everybody in this episode did an amazing job. And we are seeing what I predicted in episodes one and two of my recaps that we are seeing the evolution of all the characters. Now, when Al said, man, he wasn't even a manager that long, okay, that he said, man, this isn't for me. You know, it, 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 it even made me feel sick. Now, in the episode before, Ern is physically getting sick from all the hard work and the drainage. And Al looked at him as if he had this epiphany like, wow, is this what Ern goes through? Is this what he feels all the time? Even pushing him to say, hey, man, you know, hi, how you been? How you doing? You know, and it took him to feel it to understand it. And Ern's response in saying it's not about, you know, what you like or all this good stuff It is basically, you know, just survival. He's thinking clearly about his daughter setting a foundation to have money because these previous seasons, we always saw Ern on a bus or walking or on a bike or just really not having much of his own or anything. Now that he has some money for his family and he doesn't have to depend on Van all the time, he has independence, but he is literally, literally just just he doesn't like what he does it's very obvious and he's just in it for the money i have friends that were pre-med with me who are doctors and they can't stand it they're making great money 
but they can't stand it. They call me and they tell me I'm already in too deep. I might as well stay in it. You know, I've invested all of this money. I'm in all of this debt. I might as well stay in it. They've lost their passion for medicine. Hopefully we will see in this season that Earn is not knee deep in it yet. He still has an opportunity and he's building a, fa- a foundation for himself of funding to say, how do I want to change the direction of my life? Do I want to do something different? And if I have my family by my side and my friends, can I make this happen? So I think we're going to see that turn. For those of you who didn't get my predictions from episode one, make sure that you look at that um, just so you can see my predictions for the rest of the season and my predictions for the for the rest of the characters. Let's talk about Yodel Kid. It's no secret that a lot of artists within the music industry have had problems with addiction and we don't hear about the addiction or learn about the addiction until until it's too late because you have greedy people that are around you that could care less about you they just want you to make the money even Al even Al ignored it because he probably thought this is not my problem this is not my issue I'm just trying to make money just like everybody around him everybody could see that he was under any influence all the time everybody could see that he had a problem but people ignored it because you have greed behind it saying mm, I don't know if I should say anything about this I don't know if I should bring this to attention because at the end of the day that's maybe somebody else's problem and that's really really sad and it happens all the time there's so many artists that go through that and greed holds them hostage Lauren Hill D'Angelo I mean, it could go on and on about so many artists that dealt with addiction and tried to move forward. But the audience, as it was pointing out in this episode, loses interest. Now, hear about, listen to this. A lot of the times in the 90s, early 2000s, and even before that, artists would allow you time to miss them. It wasn't, you know unnormal right it wasn't nor- you know weird if you came out with an album every two years you know every year was like wow you know you're really getting it out fast but it was normal for artists to take a couple of years to come out with the next thing and you missed that artist and when they came out with an album you were ready right because you haven't heard from this artist in a while now you better not do that. People lose interest and their attention spans are so short because of social media that you dare not to take that long for an album. And it's sad. And they're showing the transition, especially in this episode. People want Young Street. People want Hip. You're getting too old. Even the lyrics from Benny. Hey, if you were in this year, you're probably getting ready to die. If you remember that, that was a long time ago to him, to his age. You know, so you just start to think about how the industry is so vain and it's so about the optics right as as bunk and his friends said during the meeting it's all about the optics you know you're getting older you you know you get to the point where you can play ice cubes friend and are we there yet five you know and it's funny and it makes you chuckle but it's the truth there's only so many people to where they can surpass the age image and they can morph into something else because if you don't then you start hearing people say you fell off or you're not this or you're not that which is, which is a lie You know, it's a lie because even to get a song on the radio is an accomplishment. I don't people think I don't think people realize how uh, how much of accomplishment that is, especially with the, the, the vultures of radio. You know, the politics of that, getting your song heard. There's a lot of artists that have so much talent, but the industry, the streaming, the unfairness, the all of that takes a toll on what we hear and what we see let me know what you think subscribe hit that like button click that notification bell so you don't miss anything check out other shows the handmaid's tale we have bell collective ready to love and so much more check out a lot of shows go to those pay- playlists and just binge watch now just a fair warning we got wu-tang and american saga a hulu original series that's coming out with the next season so if you haven't seen the previous seasons you need to binge watch that because th- that show is emmy nominated and is absolutely amazing so make sure you check that out it's well stay tuned we have house of the dragon the prequel of the hbo original series game of thrones check that out so much more the handmaid's tale the emmy award-winning show absolutely amazing and it's not for the the weak at heart so <laughs> i'm warning you it's not a, a kid's show okay um let me know what you think leave your comments below if you're too shy make sure to hit up hit up my dms on my dm on instagram at official bun underscore e the same name in the meantime in between time remember to take care of yourself and each other bye <laughs>